Um, so before I start the, the presentation, and uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Um, I just would like to let you know that we'll be recording the, the session. So this session will also be published on our Raptor website and EAT Urban Mobility channel for interested uh, applicants to the Raptor challenge. So I would just like to start with that note. And um, so now, uh, before, before we kick off, so I would just like to introduce myself. My name is Jan Simon, I uh, work at uh, EAT Urban Mobility based in Barcelona in the innovation team and uh, manage the Raptor program with my colleagues, Emma and Taylor, who are also on the call. So welcome everyone. And uh, this is the, the first of our Q&A sessions for the Agile Innovation Raptor call of the year. Uh, we are all very excited because we have our, our first six cities presenting their challenges uh, that uh, I've been introduced for the Raptor program 2023. So uh, I'll start first presenting the, the Q&A agenda so you will understand uh, the course of the of the next hour together. So I will start first with a very short introduction about the Raptor Raptor basics. Uh, so that will be take around ten minutes, so you can understand uh, the most basics and important elements about the Raptor call. And in case you missed our um, info session last week, uh, you can find it on our EAT Urban Mobility YouTube channel or on the Raptor website. So I strongly invite you to, to have a look at it in case you, you missed it. Then we will have our city challenges presentation. So with Aishka, Akureyri, Capital Region of Denmark, Debrecen, Dumnitz and Advahom and Helsingborg. And then we'll have a good amount of time uh, if we make it on time around 20 minutes for uh, Q&A. So startups and SMEs are more than welcome to, to ask questions to the city. So you can type them in the chat box. And then I will um, I will share them with the with the city. So, without further ado, let's start first with the, the Raptor basics. I see we have an increasing number of participants to the call, so that's great. Um, first, what is Raptor? Uh, some of you that might be know with the concept might ask themselves what uh, Raptor has to do with each urban mobility and urban mobility. Uh, so, Raptor means rapid applications for transport. It's a city-driven, challenge-based and agile innovation program of EAT Urban Mobility. And the purpose of the program is to match niche city urban mobility challenges, this year we have 12, to solutions developed by startups and SMEs from all across Europe. So awarded startups and SMEs then get five months to develop a product, service, a solution to solve this city challenge. Where was Raptor so far? So we started at the end of 2021 uh, with four pilots and then it scaled up very quickly. So in total this year, we have 31st pilots in 24 cities. If we include the, pi the pilots that took place last year uh, and we can see here are 12 cities. So I will, uh, they will all have the time to present later. So I won't go over it, but uh, what's very exciting is that we can see the geographical expansion of the program. Uh, which is a, a great sign of the, of the success of the, of the Raptor program where CT also have the power to decide for the innovation and startups and SMEs get the chance to, to test their solutions and develop new products uh, in these cities. And this leads me to my next point where, as I said in introduction, I work in the innovation team at EAT Urban Mobility and the purpose of our team and of the EAT urban mobility is to take innovations to markets, to have new solutions to transform the urban mobility in cities, make cities more livable. And what startups and SMEs are expected to do uh, during the Raptor program is, is the most important thing here is to develop a new uh, or significantly improved product, service or solution to address one of the 12 Raptor city challenges. So today we'll see uh, six of them. Tomorrow we have uh, the Q&A session with the, with the remaining six challenges that we have. Um, and most importantly, what we'll see in this slide is who can apply it. So startups and SMEs registered no more than 10 years ago would apply. So that, that would concern a high amount of startups and SMEs on the market. Uh, then you should be registered in an EU member state or a third country associated to Horizon Europe in addition to UK and Switzerland. Important point, you should have not received funding from the EAT Urban Mobility for the same product development. 
And last important point, when you submit your application on our awards platform, uh, that where you can find the link on the, our Raptor website, um, the you should register the new participant portal number. So it's a called a PIC number. It's a very easy. You can just Google it and you will find the, the information. So we prefer to mention that so you're not caught by surprise when you try to submit your application. Now telling you a bit more about the Raptor program. So what do winners get? So we'll have 12 winners this year as we have 12 city challenges and an award package includes the real life testing of your solution in the city, which is a fantastic opportunity for, for startups and SMEs. Then you will also get 35,000 euro grant per startups and SMEs. You will get the first half at the beginning of your pilot in August and the second half at the end in December uh, once the pilot was confirmed uh, by the city. So we also have uh, additional requirements to make sure that the, the pilot runs smoothly. So I strongly invite you to have a look at the info session uh, that we presented last week, which is on our Raptor channel and YouTube channel if you, in case you, you missed it. Um, importantly, and, and why we have all of our Raptor cities here today. So you will also have the chance to have a city contact corresponding to your challenge. So that uh, ensures a smooth collaboration where city and startup can work together to make sure that what is developed during the five months Raptor programs answers to what the city expects, but also matches with the, what the startups has been selected for um, during the pilot. Then you can get optional office space. Let's say you have a hardware solution that you need to install in Iceland, for example, uh, or in, uh, in Hungary, maybe you might need uh, to stay a few days in, um, in a city. So that could be arranged. Um, you also have the chance to get flexible and tailored mentoring session. And this is highly valued by all of the Raptor alumni. So you will get the possibility to have mentoring session about your pricing, marketing strategy, business development, also intellectual property. So this, we ask you during your application to define the mentoring needs you, you, you would have during the, the course of the pilot. And then we make sure that uh, our mentoring uh, and, and mentors uh, can answer to your needs. And you will also get a future potential invitation to other programs within EAT Urban Mobility. So now in this slide, we'll see what the cold timeline is. And that's my last slide before we, we start with the, the CT uh, challenge explanation. So we're currently in the startup and SME competition phase. So we have a call open. Uh, startups and SMEs are invited to apply to CT challenges. Important point. Um, as a startup or SME, you can apply to more than one challenge. You won't be penalized for that, but you will only be able to be selected for one of them. So you can see here the link of our website where you can access the link or the direct link, which is eaturban.awardsplatform.com. Then from the 8th of May to the 30th of July will be the online evaluation and monitoring. This first phase will take place between May and June. Uh, so we have first the, the quality evaluation and which will be in May. And the second phase, the pitch and Q&A that will be in, uh, in June. So by end June, we should announce the winners and then July will be for, uh, let's say more administrative requirements to make sure that we're all set to start the pilot in August. So the, the pilot will start on the 1st of August until the 15th of December. Uh, we'll start in August with a kickoff meeting with the city, uh, our Raptor team here at EAT Urban Mobility, and then we'll make sure to have monthly checking with the city uh, and us. So we, we are on, on the track to, to develop the solution. And this will, of course, be, um, well, you will have the chance to get mentoring support uh, between these meetings. So we will, won't let you alone during a full, full month. So we may want to make sure that you work uh, with Agile methodology in an iterative way to, to develop your solution. So you, you will have a, a close support from our mentors in the Raptor program. And, uh, and I will repeat myself here, this is, has been highly valued by the, by the startups and SMEs who joined the program uh, over the last year. So without further ado, I will now uh, leave the floor over to my colleagues from Hashka in Hungary for the Public Transport Optimization Challenge. So, uh, Gergely and the Ashka team, over to you. You can uh, unmute yourself and uh, I'll, I'll present your slides. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Balázs Poit. Uh, I'm the youth referent in the municipality of Aika. I am joined by my colleagues in the municipality, uh, and I will present to you our uh, challenge, which is called How Can We Optimize Public Transport Routes to the Advantage uh, the, to Take Advantage of the New Bridge? Uh, can we have the next slide, please? So firstly, uh, let's talk a bit uh, about uh, our city. The town of Aika is located to the north of the Lake Balaton. Aika is the employment, educational and uh, health center in this region. The town has 14,000 uh, jobs, workplaces, and the town uh, was created by a merger of six uh, smaller municipalities in the past. The inner areas of the town, uh, in the air, inner areas of the town, there are large residential areas uh, connected by six outer, basically suburban uh, districts uh, in a radial structure. Uh, today, more than 14,000 uh, people, the men, commute uh, daily to our town uh, in the city center. The number of cars in the city has risen uh, by 24% in the last 10 years, which uh, caused a bit of a strain in our traffic infrastructure. Uh, but besides cars, uh, urban public transportation is an important uh, factor in uh, our transportation system. Uh, the city is bisected by the Torna stream, but there are only two bridges that uh, supports bus transportation, which is uh, a problem, but it can be solved. Currently, all bus services have to cross the center of the city. Uh, can you next, next. Next, next slide? Yes. Yes, you can uh, see the bus lines here, actually. Uh, all, so all bus services, as you can see, have to cross the center of the city. Uh, the railway station, which can be seen on the lower uh, right corner, is the terminus of these uh, uh, local bus routes, uh, which, as you can see, all of them has to do a little bit of detour to the city center. Uh, the city has been planning for more than 70 years to solve this problem uh, by building a new bridge. Uh, thankfully, uh, we won an EU grant last December, which will uh, connect Baker Street and Alcott Mine Street over the Torna Creek. Uh, you can see the exact place of uh, this planned uh, new bridge at the red spot on the map. Uh, the plans for the bridge have been completed and construction is scheduled to begin uh, uh, to start in November this year. Uh, the construction of this new bridge will completely uh, transform downtown uh, transportation. The railway station, the city market, and the housing estate on uh, Algot Mine Street will be accessible by a new route. Uh, at the same time, the city also plans uh, to review public transport routes. Public transport services are partly local, by the way, and uh, uh, some also meet regional needs. Uh, next slide. Next, slide. Next, slide. Next, slide, next 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 slide please next 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 thank you uh, the hungarian state railway has made significant changes to the rail timetable last november basically the small railway stations between the city of aika and westprim have been uh, closed down uh, which uh, basically forces uh, the villagers to take the bus and commute either to West Plain or Aika railway station if they want to board the train, uh, which also increases uh, traffic, uh, public transportation traffic going towards uh, our city, especially uh, the railway station, of course, uh, which is also a problem that can be solved uh, by this bridge. So what we want to achieve uh, with this project exactly? Well, uh, the city would like to transform its public transport system, reviewing its current bus routes to make the best use of the new bridge, increasing efficiency, but also uh, reflecting the needs of the city's residents. 
uh, improve the information uh, and communication channels to keep residents up to date to the urban mobility uh, system. Last but not least, uh, increase the use of public transport, leading to reduced congestion and uh, car use. What do we need? Uh, well, we need technical assistance for the new timetable and also for mobility planning, uh, digital information and communication tools, and uh, the sharing of uh, these know holes, know house uh, to solve uh, similar problems. So our challenge is how can we optimize public transport routes to take advantage of the opportunities offered by this uh, uh, plan, the new bridge? We welcome your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the for the presentation, Balas. So we will uh, have the, the Q&A session at the end. So now we will uh, move over to the accurate presentation. We go all the way north to, to Iceland. So um, accurate team, if you could just unmute yep. yourself and, and present your camera. So I will, we will start with your presentation. Yep. Can Perfect. you hear me? So yes, we can hear you, Perfect. Katla. Fantastic. Perfect. Over to you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, so my name is Kathleen. I'm from Akurede, Iceland. Um, so just a bit of context before we dive into mobility and our challenge. So Iceland is a small island in the North Atlantic Ocean, as you can see on the left picture. Um, on that island, Akurede is situ situated in the north, often referred to as the capital of the north because it's the uh, biggest town outside of the capital area. Um, Akrede kind of identifies as a town, not quite a city, since we have around 20,000 uh, residents. And two things about the landscape and geography worth mentioning before we dive into the challenge. Um, Akrede is a city in the north of the country, like I said, close to the Arctic Circle, and winter can therefore be a quite quite a long time and we do tend to see a couple of snowstorms during the winter time. Um, additionally, uh, like we see on the bottom picture, the town is designed in a hill. So there are quite steep hills from the downtown area to the like main area, like a living area for residents. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so, as you may have seen, we have identified our mobility challenge to be to optimize transport intermodality, meaning how can we optimize the use of public transport and micro mobility solutions. Um, we identified this challenge based on the status quo here in uh, here in town. The average car car ownership is quite high, around 8.5 cars per every 10 residents. So. That's quite high. Um, and we have a free bus system, which is how we're not, how we're not used enough. Um, based on a survey conducted in 2019, about 86% of the residents said they were unhappy with the current public transport system. And that has not been altered um, to date. Um, then another thing, the mindset of the residents can be seen as a root cause to the challenge. Um, even though Akurere is literally a 15 minute town, um, like you can see on the picture, where you can bike from one end to the other in around 15 minutes, it often doesn't cross resident, the resident's mind to use anything else than their private car. Um, and like the picture shows on the right, um, if you're situ situated in the middle, you can see the radius for walking and biking in 15 minutes. Um, However, in recent years, the sidewalks have been improved, so not all that. And there has been improved snow removal on main sidewalks, so we don't see that as a problem. Um, and just shortly about the current micro mobility solutions we have in Nakure, it consists of privately owned bicycles, e bikes, and scooters, and shared e scooters just during the summertime. So we have a bit of a limited options to date. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. So just shortly about the available data that I thought of. Um, so on the 
uh, graph, you can see an overview of the model share splits for the transportation options for the years 2019-2020. Uh, um, so we have a split between winter and summer. And there you can see that the majority travels by car all year round. So that's just that's kind of the root of our problem. Um, we do have real time data for buses, but only their, their locations. We don't have like a counter in the buses that um, keeps tabs on how many passengers we have at each time. Um, um, we have done a preliminary mapping of intermodal hubs but that has not been approved by the town yet, but it's just an idea what we put down, which could be helpful for startups. Um, and we do have traffic data for the main streets, if that's helpful, how many cars are on the street at a given time. Um, so yeah, that's it from us from Akureyri. We are so looking forward to see the solutions to our challenge and happy to answer all the questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathleen. We are all looking forward to it as well. Um, just a, a kind reminder, in case you have any question, you have the Q&A tab at the top or the bottom of, the, of your screen. So feel free to, to type in your questions and we will uh, go through them one by one uh, after all of the city's presentations. So now uh, we travel to Denmark with um, the capital region of Denmark and the EV charging price transparency challenge. Uh, that will be presented with Lucas. Over to you, Lucas. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is uh, Lucas Perkil and I work at the Knowledge Center Copenhagen Electric that is placed in the capital region of Denmark. Um, we work a lot with uh, distributing knowledge towards uh, citizens, municipalities and companies within the region that could help their uh, transition towards electrical vehicles. And we also participate in a lot of uh, pilot projects that could determine effects of, of new ideas that could possibly help the uh, transition towards electric vehicles uh, as well. So we're very excited to be a part of this uh, Rapture program. And uh, today I'm here to present our challenge uh, called EV Charging Price Transparency, where we seek to how we can avoid overpriced EV charging on uh, public public uh, charging infrastructure and secure uh, price transparency for the EV users. And you can go to the next slide, please. So the problem that uh, we face today is that on public uh, charges, there are a, a lot of different ways to, to pay for the service. You can both pay the, the operator uh, for the charging. And you can pay uh, different roaming services that offer charging across different uh, charging networks. And some of these roaming services are cheaper than the operator themselves that own the equipment. And some of them have a, a small fee, which makes them uh, a more expensive option than the operator. And then you have a third option, which is a prepaid option, sort of like a, a voucher or a gift card solution, where you can prepay for say 100 kilowatt hours and you know what, the, the kilowatt hour price is, and then you can use that um, voucher to, to charge on, on different charges. And all these uh, different payment options, they have their own prices, uh, which is a problem because sometimes these prices, they can uh, vary up to more than, than 300%, which uh, really make a demand for the EV users to, to really do their homework, uh, to check each uh, payment option if they want to ensure that they pay as little as possible for the same service. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. So how would we like to see the salt? Uh, what we would like ideally is uh, to, to create an overview for, for the EV user that, that needs to charge their cars uh, by creating an, uh, an app, for example, uh, where you could could monitor the different uh, payment options and list uh, the different payment options in cheapest to most expensive uh, so that the EV users quickly can see what is the cheapest way to, to charge their car. Um, and an app like that would need to have real-time data or, or at least be updated uh, quite often because the prices can uh, change quite quickly in this uh, field. 
Um, and this solution would create the transparency that, that we seek. Uh, and it would also better the, uh, the total cost of ownership because charging of, of electric vehicles pays a uh, quite a big role in the uh, TCO for electric vehicles and thereby make the transition towards EVs for, for some users and, and some of them that, that don't have EV uh, by now, uh, make that more um, attractive. And then we had the, uh, another thought that perhaps uh, an, an app like that could be integrated with another app called uh, a better route planner, which is an app that where you can, uh, let's say you have to travel a, a thousand kilometers and then a better route planner can tell you where on the route you uh, most efficiently could, could stop and charge in order to complete the route uh, at the fastest time. And an app that could be uh, integrated with a better route planner could also uh, provide an, an option that will tell you which is the cheapest way to complete the route in, in addition to which is the fastest way to complete the route. Um, and I think that was all for me. Uh, I hope the uh, challenge have uh, caught some of your interest and I'm uh, very excited to work along you on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucas. We were very excited as well. Uh, and thanks for, for the presentation of your, of your challenge. And uh, you'll surely have uh, lots of very interesting solutions presented by, by startups and SMEs. Um, now we move over to Debrecen, we go back to Hungary with the integration of remote neighborhoods through active mobility. So, um, Istvan, over to you. Hello, everybody. My name is Istvan Tóháti. I work as a smart city expert at the KV Debrecen, which is the exclusive uh, public transport operator in the city. And the topic is integration of remote neighborhoods through active mobility. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so some key facts about the city of Debrecen. Debrecen is the second largest city of Hungary with, uh, with around 200,000 uh, population. It's not that much, but uh, we still make it to number two in Hungary. And important to mention that uh, uh, around 70,000 uh, students uh, in education um, and part of that, which is around 7,500 are foreign students. And the, it's important to mention because these foreign students uh, represent uh, purchasing power and also openness to the, to the, um, to, to the market of, uh, of the city. And we can say that the most dynamic economic expansion among rural Hungarian cities took place uh, in Debrecen, which was, I think, uh, a little more than in the last decade. A lot of uh, multinational companies opened uh, sites in Debrecen. And it's not just uh, manufacturing sites, uh, manufacturing jobs, but also other value added fields, such as engineering, accounting, finance, uh, and other kind of value-adding uh, jobs created in Debrecen. And if you look at the map of Debrecen, we can see distinct uh, areas of functionality, which means if we take a look at the north of the city, we can say that that's the part of the university. If we take a look at the, the western part of the city, this is the area where major businesses and industrial areas take place in Debrecen. We have the central, which is the, the cultural hub of the city. Uh, we have the eastern part, which is, which is the largest part of the city. And the, this is mainly um, low density uh, residential areas. And to the south, we, we have a mixture of business and residential areas. So this is the, the map of the functionality of Debrecen. Next slide, please. And we have the challenge. We can see the, also, we can also see the map of Debrecen. And uh, this is not a heat map, but this is the public transport uh, network of the city, which you can see. Uh, the red lines are the bus lines, and um, the, the two blue lines are the, the tram lines 
uh, of Debrecen. And we really have to combat uh, on the field of mobility with the excessive car usage. Uh, in the 90s, around 50,000 cars were used in the city of Debrecen, which has doubled uh, by today. And it is going to further increase if we do not take actions against it. And you can see marked with yellow are the low density residential areas to the east. And you can see that the bus lines are uh, really uh, uh, relatively scarce compared to the other parts uh, of the town. And we can say that the, in the morning, and uh, especially in the morning, uh, people go to work. And you could see in the previous map that uh, mainly the, the jobs are located on the western side of the city. So a large uh, portion of the travels are made by car, especially through the city center, which you can see uh, marked with the red circle. Most of the traffic is conducted there, and this uh, puts heavy pressure on the urban roads. And, um, and our challenge is basically to, to integrate these low density uh, residential areas with an innovative way and to, to utilize active mobility for the commuters to reach the frequently used uh, public transport uh, hubs of the city uh, with bicycle or uh, on foot effect, uh, effectively. And then they could continue their way using bus or tram or whatever, they, uh, whatever is most useful uh, for the daily routes. So basically, this is our challenge. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Very much, Istvan. And uh, well, we'll cover uh, the questions that, uh, that that are coming in uh, in in two cities. So we have uh, Dubnitsa and Advahon next, and then we'll have uh, the city of um, Helsingborg in Sweden. So over to um, to Dubnitsa and Advahon in in Slovakia. Apologies for my mispronunciation. Um, okay. The micro mobility usage of uh, take. Uh, well, Peter, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Peter from Slovakia, Central Europe, and I'm representing the city of Dubnitsa and Advahon. Uh, our city is not the uh, biggest one. It has approximately 24,000 inhabitants. Um, but uh, due to the fact that uh, Dubnica is a pretty big industrial town with many companies settled in with its factories, many people from surrounding villages and cities commute here for work. That means that there are often traffic jams in town center during morning and afternoon rush hours. Another fact uh, contributing to this trend is uh, that there are three housing estates with many car owners, so which results in our crowded car parks. So many cars have to be parked along the streets, as you may see on the, uh, in the picture. Um, our long-term vision is to make uh, Dubnica a modern and prosperous city of um, uh, region of Pobazie with a progressive infrastructure providing a wide range of services. Um, uh, our challenge is basically to encourage uh, people of Dubnica and its neighborhood to use bike or other micro mobility means of transport uh, as the way of transport instead of cars. So uh, we support bicycle using. Uh, last year, we started bike sharing in our city. Uh, there are 13 uh, bike sharing bike stands, uh, but all of them are situated within the town. Uh, these days, we are at the end of the process of building a bicycle road outside the town, and um, bicycle roads within the town are planned to be built in the next few years. Um, so our Raptor challenge is focused to people commuting to Dubnica from other towns and cities too, as well as the residents of uh, Dubnica. And um, uh, we are looking for a um, solution which will will be safe, sustainable, and scalable. So we can use this uh, model all over the city for a long time. And uh, we prefer any energy requirements of the solution to be covered by renewable sources of energy as much as possible, for example, from solar panels. Um, 
we like to make this uh, solution really accessible. So even kids should be able to use it, for example, when they are commuting to schools. And uh, also owners or more expensive bike models shouldn't be worried about using it too. So that means that we are looking for some kind of innovative models of uh, something like a, a, a bike park or something like that, that uh, encourage people to use uh, this kind of uh, transport instead of cars. And uh, this is uh, all from us, from Dubnica, and we are looking forward to your solutions and uh, ideas of supporting micromobility usage in our cities. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Peter, for, for the presentation. And uh, now we, last but not least, uh, Elsingborg in, in Sweden with the Bicycle Culture Know-How Challenge. So I will hand it over to Emma for the presentation. Eva, Emma, it's uh, over to you now. Thank you, uh, Jan. So yes, my name is Emma Kangas, and I'm the project manager uh, in Helsingborg Municipality, working with mobility management. And as you can see, Helsingborg is a coastal city. It's located in the south of Sweden, and we have 150,000 citizens here. Uh, so next slide, please. So we are looking for someone to contribute to an uh, innovative solution to develop Helsingborg's bicycle culture. Uh, because despite substantial investments in infrastructure and advocacy work, the people of Helsingborg are traveling by bicycle to a lesser extent than people in other same size cities in Sweden. And as you can see in the, the table here, the, in Helsingborg, it's only 11% of the travels that are made by bicycle. And compared to other same size cities, uh, we are well below their numbers. Uh, Malmö, for example, 25%, Lund, 27%. And they're also located in the south of Sweden, so close to us and with the same um, um, same uh, weather and geographical situation. Uh, next slide, please. So our hope is to take one step further towards, for example, this is uh, solutions that we are thinking about, increased cycling in the city. Uh, easier access to bicycles, improved increased communication on cycling, increased cycling tourism, improved data collection on cycling traffic. So I just want to make clear that we're not asking for anyone to solve all these problems, but uh, these are just examples for uh, different kinds of solutions that we're looking for. Um, and uh, in uh, Helsingborg, it's very popular with e-bikes and cargo bikes. So the solution can be applicable for both e-bikes, cargo bikes, and standard bikes. Next slide, please. And also the whole city can be included in the solution or parts can be chosen. And possible solutions could involve education, gamification, or simply providing people with resources or support that make cycling more accessible and appealing. Uh, so we are open to many different solutions and, and ideas. Uh, the city has access to real-time traffic flow data, uh, which we can provide. But I want to make clear that it's only collected in 10 different spots in the whole city when it comes to bicycle travel. Uh, so thank you for listening. That was all I had today. Thank you very much for your presentation, Emma. Exciting. Uh, so this is great because we have, uh, well, six challenges uh, that are providing very good opportunities and, and trying to solve very interesting challenges in the field of uh, urban mobility and having a, a great impact on, on people's lives. And um, we also have many, many questions coming in. So uh, I'll start first with the question from Norbert. Uh, so I'll answer to this question live. So it's not a question for the city. So I'll, quite to, I'll try to answer it quickly. So it's related to 
the KPI for the second payment of EAT urban mobility at the project closure, where at least 10,000 euro uh, of invoice should be presented from a customer. How can we sync this requirement of this project? Who is the customer? And can we count on the signed subscription contract fee or should it be paid already? So for this, um, for this challenge, so th this is not particular to to one challenge. It's a requirement for the overall Raptor program. Um, and here, so you could start uh, making a revenue in 2023. So that, that, that could count. And then if, if the other half of the revenue, let's say if you do in 2022 and you do the rest in 2024, um, sorry, so 23 and 24, then that uh, that could be arranged uh, uh, with us. So that that's something we can discuss. This requirement would only apply if you if you win the challenge, as you as you can understand. And the customers doesn't ha don't have to be customers from uh, from Raptor. It can be other customers. So that's an important point. So in case you have any additional question, feel free to reach out to us at uh, raptor at eaturbanmobility.eu and we can give you further detail on this uh, question. Um, now we have a question for Accurady. Uh, so uh, for Accurady, it has been said that citizens were not happy with public transport. Um, can we know why? Does a mobility as a service approach could be the answer to your challenge, uh, Katla, where the mobility as a service solution could uh, provide the citizen all intermodality results from a real-time journey planner, including combination of public transport, private bike, and shared mobility? So uh, I know it's quite a long question, Katla, so if you want, I, I can repeat the first one, and then we go bit by bit. So the first uh, one is, um, <laughs> can we know why um, accurate citizens uh, are not happy with public transport? Yeah, of course. Um, I would say the unhappiness regarding the bus system is mainly sourced in infrequent routes. So currently we have six lines driving in kind of big circles around the town, which results in low frequency. Um, and But in 2020, a new bus system was designed with two lines, which were to be run more frequently. However, it was not implemented because of the high implementation cost. So we still have the same system that the residents are not that happy about. Um, and then the second part was the, about the mobility as service, right? I can definitely see that as a solution and um, because it would give residents a good overview of the available transportation options and it's not something we have um, in present. So yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Yeah, the third was connected to that as well, asking about the mobility as a service solution that could provide citizen all intermodality results. So it, the answer is yes. Thank you, yeah. Katla. Good. And now we have a question for Debrecen. Um, the description mentions safe, green, and user-friendly storage solution for micromobility vehicles. Does the, the city of Debrecen want only parking facilities for bicycles next to bus stops or also decrease the car use with more innovative solutions? Um, for example, how innovative is it to, to encourage residents to cycle one kilometer to the bus stops, uh, uh, only to ride the bus for another three kilometers? And is there openness for the city of the, the Brisbane for non-parking solutions only? Uh, yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, the Brisbane, this challenge is not restricted, uh, although it is very, very ideal for us to locate um, safe storages at uh, frequently used bus stops. Uh, because that would be a huge help uh, in our case. Uh, but it is not restricted uh, to just uh, this kind of solution because this whole program is to find out what, what the market uh, offers. And we would like to discover uh, options that uh, we could utilize, which could be really vary. And who knows? Who knows what uh, solution will be the, the most ideal? But um, in the second part of your question about the 
uh, micro electricity cars. Uh, I don't know what uh, like uh, what is the size of these cars and and if the if these cars would commute uh, on, among uh, regular uh, vehicles uh, in urban traffic with with regular cars and buses, I would uh, I would say this is not an ideal solution because we really need to decrease car traffic. Uh, this is for Debrecen, this is the number one uh, 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 challenge and goal to, to decrease urban car traffic because it's, it's not just a painful uh, thing in the present, but with all these large businesses coming to Debrecen in the future, it is going to be even more painful. So we really need to, to find solutions to uh, to decrease uh, car traffic, and this is why we 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 need to focus on these uh, low residential uh, areas to offer a possibility to to leave uh, their cars at home and uh, to reach their urban goals efficiently for these uh, for these residents in the city. Great, thank you for your answer, Istvan. Um, so if you have any additional question, uh, I see we have many people on the call. Uh, feel free to, to type it in the in the Q and A in the Q and A button. So we we still have a few questions. So I will go over it. The next question is for Peter um, from Copenhagen. So um, uh, no, so let me check. No, the, the question is maybe it's it's a mistake with the name. So the, the question is for Lucas uh, from Copenhagen. Do you have plans for a new platform applications to be integrated with other tools? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, since we are a public uh, authority, we can't really uh, make apps or or these kind of solution ourselves because we potentially could compete with the private sector. Um, but what we can do and what we are doing is to express a, a need for a solution that, that could give this uh, kind of uh, transparency and, and make sure that the end user don't pay more than what they have to need, what they need to uh, for the same service. Um, but of course, we have, we have other ideas and, and, and other aspects that, that an app could have. Uh, so, for example, if we take a city like Copenhagen, which is uh, the capital of Denmark, Denmark uh, which is more dense in terms of number of charges per square kilometers. Perhaps it could also be a, a, a nice feature to see which kind of charger offers the, the cheapest charging in this uh, restricted uh, geographical area. But but we don't have any plans ourselves to, to make an app or, or any tools that that could provide these solutions. So that's what we're asking you for. Thank you very much, Lucas. And oh, I'm, I'm, sorry a... to in, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just seen that the microelectricity electricity cars were not for Debrecen. So I am sorry for answering that question. That's okay, no problem. No problem, Mr. Um, okay, no, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, we have... Um, a question as well coming for Aishka. So if, um, so the startup is asking, if we get a chance to win, will the city share access to public transport data? Uh, what could be made available? For example, the challenge says to focus on a, an increasing number of public transport user. Is there a particular focus on buses or trams or cycling? So it's, I think it's two different questions. So let, let's, um, take the first one, then we, will the city be able to share access to public transport data and what type of data could be made available? This would be for you, Balash. If you can hear us, Balash, are you still here? Uh, sorry, yes. can we... Uh, just a minute, please. That's okay. So I, I will uh, okay. then Sorry. I will I will go over the next uh, the other question we have for Akureyri. Um That was for and then we'll come back to your question, uh, okay. Balash. Okay. So 
for accurately, accurately, there is a startup that has a solution including microelectricity cars, um, but the Raptor budget is not enough to buy those cars. So just as a reminder, the, the Raptor budget is 35,000 euros. This is the, the, the price of the grant. Can the municipality provide an electric or diesel car for us to use during our uh, institute test? tests? This is a question for you, Katla. Um, yes, I think so, but it would have to be approved and like go through the formal process. But I think uh, we could make something available for the inside, uh, onsite to test, maybe an electric or a methane car or something we have on hand. But it's an yeah, it's a possibility, um, but it has to be like you have to look at it more closely. That Thank you, sense. Katla. Thank you. And, and if I may add as well, during our evaluation process, we have, if you reach the second phase, we have a, a panel hearing where we'll have the chance to ask a question and answer. So this will be the first stage where we can align on the material requirements you have uh, as a startup and, and with the city, and then we'll align on these elements uh, for the kickoff meeting in August, as I presented. So thank you for the answer, Katla. Good. So now back to Aishka in Hungary with um, with Balash. So the the first question you receive is if you get the chance to uh, if a startup gets the chance to win, um, will you be able as a city to share access to the public transport uh, data and, and what type of data could be made available? Okay, so the answer to this question is uh, that we have a limited uh, amount of the data. The usage of uh, the transport system is uh, monitored uh, not uh, in a regular schedule, but uh, on uh, occasions. But we have a uh, limited data uh, of the of the usage. Yes, and is it? Um... Just to give more information to the to the startup who ask, is it like departure and arrival data that you have available at the moment that you could be able to share with the startup or SME? I see you're discussing, so you're on mute just in case you. Uh, okay, so we have a. Uh... Yes, basically the data we are provi uh, provided is by the account, uh, accounts of uh, the bus drivers. So we have a limited amount of data from uh, the departure to the finish. Uh, and and, the, uh, and uh, in between, but we also have uh, data uh, from the uh, amount of uh, uh, 30 day tickets and okay. like, uh, uh, the purchasing numbers, yes. Understood. Thank you for the answer, Balash. Um, and, and there was a, another question for you. So your challenge says that the focus is on increasing the number of public transport users. Is there a particular focus on buses or, or trams uh, or cycling, or should it include everything? Uh, mainly the bus network, so it's uh, the top priority in this uh, exact question. Understood. Yeah. Thank you very much, Balas. Um, okay, so now we have a, a question for Dubnitsa Nadvahom. So we're reaching the end of the question. In case you have, uh, we have five more minutes. In case you have any additional questions on the, on the call, feel free to type type them in the in the Q and A box. Um, is the, so the question is fairly simple for you, Peter. Is the city open to any other solution than bike parking? And, and what would it be in this case? You are on mute, Peter. Sorry. OK. Uh, I think uh, basically we are open to also some other ideas that uh, can uh, help reduce the amount of car users. But uh, as we are uh, we are looking uh, for the 
bike parks uh, mainly, but it's not uh, some kind of uh, uh, also other other solutions can can be can be posted too. It's not not just uh, for a bike bike parking, but uh, we would like to have some some kind of uh, um, uh, innovative bike parks too in our city, because uh, as I said, we we um, we build it. We are building a bike road, and uh, also we have a bike sharing. So we we would like to encourage people to use this means of transport as, as well. But it's not uh, not some limitations to to provide some solutions just for bike bike uh, parking. Understood. Thank you, Peter, for the for the answer. Um, so we have uh, another question in the chat. Is it possible for a city to pick a non-winner to run a trial in parallel, understanding that the grant is already allocated and is not an option? So, um, for so th this cannot be done through the Raptor program. But well, I, I cannot reply on behalf of the of the six cities and twelve cities overall that are in the Raptor program. But in case um, there is interesting innovations that are presented through the Raptor program. It can also uh, like act as an eye opener for cities. And, and of course, um, some cities could be interested to, to reach out to you in case you're not the selected one um, and would like to work throughout the Raptor program. But this is not something we can guarantee. And this would be running uh, outside of the Raptor program scope. So uh, we have a last question for. Elzingborg, so that will be for you, Emma. Uh, would the city be able to share the data from the bike real-time traffic flow? I think yes. Your your challenge describes that you have data points in the in the city for the bike real-time traffic flow. Would the city be able to to share this data to during the um, during the challenge and with the startup? Yes, uh, absolutely. That's no problem at all. All right. Okay, perfect, good. Um, and maybe one question on, on my side, uh, out of curiosity, what data points do you collect for with these uh, with these sensors that are installed in the city? That could uh, be interesting for to, startups. Yeah, you know, when it comes to bike uh, bicycling, it's uh, we have uh, different major routes that are connected throughout the city, and so in nine different locations they are situated and. They only measure when someone passes by with a bicycle. Uh, so we get the number of passages per day, per minute. Uh, it, it, it can be scaled down very easily. Understood. Thank you very much for the, for the reply, Emma. Um, so I see we reached the end of all of the questions that have been asked to, to our Raptor email address or on our, our Q&A. Uh, chat box here in, in the Zoom call. So um, you have a, a few seconds in case there is a last minute question, but if not, I'd like to say a big thanks to, to everyone who attended the call and to the cities who, who presented their challenges and took the time to to reply to the um, to the questions. So in case uh, your startup and SME was also interested by the, the six of the challenges we have uh, for Raptor, we have our next Q&A session tomorrow with the six other cities that presented their challenges. So we have Ankara in Turkey, Stuttgart and Munich in Germany, The Hague, uh, Mechelen in Belgium and Holland. And we also have the metropolitan area of Barcelona. So tune in tomorrow. I don't see any additional question coming in. So I wish a, a great day to, to everyone. And thank you for joining our, our first uh, Raptor Q&A session. Have a good day.